Last week, I released Dark Corners, my latest short film or production short or whatever you want to call it. And every time I do one of these little short videos, I'm always trying to do something new, something I've never done before, something that's going to push me outside of my comfort zone. And Dark Corners was kind of as new as it gets, and it's the most uncomfortable I've ever been making a video because I had to use HitFilm, which I had never used before. I had to use Blender, which I had never used before. I had to work with a 3D model, which I had never used before. And all of the shots that had the monster in it, those, those were filmed on an iPad. <sighs> Now, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time talking about the iPad stuff, but before we do that, I wanna run through the rest of the production real quick. Starting with the planning process. I had a whole bunch of ideas running around my brain when I was trying to plan this video. I mean, first we were gonna have an alien standing in the front yard, then we were gonna do a big giant monster. At one point, we were, it was gonna be a ghost. You get the idea. There was just a lot of different ideas. I wasn't sure which ones were gonna work, which ones weren't. And so in order to organize my ideas and flush everything out, I used today's sponsor, Taskade. Once I opened up a new project in Taskade, I was able to literally map out all of my ideas using the mind map view. And I was able to kind of put all my thoughts together and figure out what was gonna work and what wasn't. And then once I decided on an idea that definitely would work, I switched it over to the organization chart view in order to build out my shot list and my equipment list and make sure that I had everything that I was going to need. Taskade really gives me a simple, flexible way to manage my projects from idea generation to final completion. And they've got a bunch of really cool features like a calendar view so you can keep track of your production schedule and collaborative features like the ability to video chat right within the app. So if you're looking for a simple, flexible, easy to use way to manage your next video project, click the link in the description, check out Taskade, and don't forget to use Jay Litman at checkout for a 50% off lifetime discount. All right, so that takes care of the planning process. With that out of the way, let's move on to the outside shots, all of the shots on the outside. And it was all filmed the same way. It was all filmed with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with the EFS 17 to 55 f 2.8 lens. I had the Black Promist and an ND filter, as well as the Small Rig Mini Map Box, which helped keep the glare of the sun out of the lens. For audio, I used the Deity S Mic 2S and recorded directly into to the camera, I had it on a boom arm and just, you know, basic stuff. Oh, and lighting. For lighting, I used the sun. Now, admittedly, I got a little bit lazy with the filming and I opted to utilize the zoom on the lens instead of actually physically moving the camera to the place where I could get the best angle. Lesson learned, I'm gonna pay more attention to that last time. This is why we do these things, so we can learn. The inside shots were all filmed with the same gear, except, you know, no ND filter, obviously. And the lighting was just the lighting that I have set up for my talking head shots. All I did was reposition my key light so I could get me walking into the door and not be completely in shadow. The great thing about not setting up great lighting so everything would be, you know, perfectly exposed is that it kept this scene dark, which is exactly what I was going for. And that's it. Most of the shots that I got were on a tripod. Some of them, especially the interior ones, were handheld, but it was, I mean, it was a really simple shoot. I didn't have to move the camera very much. The only thing I will say is I did a lot of planning as far as when I was going to cut. I definitely filmed for the edit. Like I knew I was going to punch in on me saying, oh, I forgot my bag. So I made sure that I filmed myself stepping onto the same step with the same foot so I could cut on that action when I got into post. And that basically covers all the main stuff. Now let's talk about the iPad. I ended up filming the shots with the monster in it on this 12 inch 
M1 iPad Pro. This is not mine. Apple sent it to me to review. I have to send it back. They're not paying me to make this video. I'll be doing a full review on this. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. Now, the app that I used in order to film this scene is called CamTrack AR. It's made by FX Home, who is the same company that makes HitFilm Pro. Now, this app is incredible. It allows you to film and do real-time camera tracking all within your device. It's absolutely nuts. All you gotta do is map out your scene, film it, drop your anchor points, and then just transfer the files that it generates over to your computer. Although I did run into a hiccup with that last step. Basically what I tried to do after I was done filming was I tried to upload all the files to Google Drive so I could download them onto my PC. But for some reason, the actual footage wouldn't upload. I don't know why, so what I ended up having to do is transfer everything over to an SSD and then plugging that into my computer. It took a little bit longer than I would have liked, but we, we got there. Now, the really cool thing about CamTrack AR, while it does have files that are compatible with Blender and some other 3D rendering softwares out there, unfortunately not Fusion, not DaVinci Resolve, they actually have everything that you would need in order to use it with HitFilm. Obviously, they're made by the same company. So I ended up using HitFilm Pro in order to do the compositing. All I had to do is drag and drop the files that were provided by CamTrack AR into my HitFilm Pro project. And all the footage was there. All the tracking data was there. All of my anchor points were there. It was just, it was all there. It was, it couldn't have been easy. CamTrack AR also has the ability to do really cool stuff with green screen, but I don't have a green screen. So we didn't touch that at all. We just, we just stuck with the camera camera tracking and it really did work well. So as far as like a review of CamTrack AR, it's a really cool thing. My only complaints is it doesn't film in 24 frames per second. You can do 30 frames per second. So I filmed everything in 30 frames per second to make everything match up, but it's a really cool, really easy thing to use. And it, there's really a lot of potential. Although if you are gonna use it, I would recommend using it with an iPhone not an iPad. iPads are not known for their cameras. So there's that. As far as the 3D model is concerned, I ended up using a 3D model from Mixamo and I chose an animation. Unfortunately, the animation didn't really work very well in HitFilm. So after some Googling and watching some YouTube videos, I figured out how to use Blender in order to create a compatible animated file that would work with hit film and then I dropped everything into hit film and all of the layers were transparent. So I had to bring back the opacity and it, it took a while. It took a while. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but the whole Mixamo to hit film thing is, is not, a very smooth process. But once I got the 3D model figured out, I was able to drag it into my project and I went around tweaking it so it would look as natural as possible. Honestly, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. So I was kind of basically just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what stuck. So first impressions on HitFilm is it's a fairly easy to use compositor, especially for somebody who knows nothing about compositing work. So I was able to figure it out relatively easily. I haven't tried it as an NLE though. So if you want to see a review of HitFilm, just let me know in the comments below. After all the compositing was done and I exported everything and I had all my files, I brought everything in to DaVinci Resolve and edited like I would any other video. I kind of lucked out with the color grading because the power grade that I made for my talking head videos actually worked fairly well with the footage that I had shot as well as the piece of stock footage that that drone shot in the beginning, that stock footage from ArtGrid. And I dumped that same power grade on there and it worked fairly well, I think. As far as cutting the footage is concerned, I paid really close attention to the match cuts, making sure that I was cutting when I was stepping down on a certain step with a certain foot. I just, I made sure everything lined up. My goal was to make all of the motion as fluid as possible. So there wasn't anything too jarring because I knew that the monster shots were gonna be jarring enough. I didn't wanna screw it up anymore with the actual camera shots. I even lucked out color grading that monster footage. That power grade ended up looking pretty good. Although what I ended up doing was making that 
footage really, really dark. I kind of pulled the Game of Thrones on you. Sorry about that, but it just, with it being properly exposed, it just did not look good at all. So I was like, let's make it dark, let's make it creepy, and we'll see how it goes. And some people, you know, really liked it. They thought it looked creepy. They thought the monster, I even got a comment that the monster looked real. Some people said that it was too dark to see. So I don't know, it looked fine on my big monitor, but maybe on phones or non-calibrated monitors, it was too dark to see. I, I don't know what the deal was, but I made it dark. And then for sound design, a lot of the stuff that you heard was actually just picked up by the microphone, like the zipper on my backpack and the creaking of the door and the footsteps when I was walking down the steps in the front of my house. That was all just picked up by my microphone. I just tweaked the levels so it would sound good. And then for everything else, like the nature sounds in the beginning of the video and the growling and breathing of the monster and the creepy undertones, all of that stuff was from Artlist, which is where I get all of my music and sound effects for my videos. They are linked below. And if you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two free months on a one year subscription. It's a pretty good deal. So I would check them out. Now, as far as what I would have done differently, Remember when I said I got a little bit lazy with the filming and I decided to utilize the zoom instead of actually physically moving the camera? There were a couple points in this video where that didn't work out so well and it kind of gave me a weird angle, specifically the shot of Michael Panetta, also known as Tech Examined, when I punched in on him at the very end of the video. It was kind of a weird angle. I should have lifted the tripod up, moved it closer, something like that. I will pay more attention to that in the future. Also, if you're going to be filming on an iPad, use a tripod because the footage is not stabilized very well and it was very, very shaky. And when I first did the composite with the 3D model, that shaky footage made everything look really, really weird. Sometimes the model and the footage were moving in different directions and it didn't look natural. So what I ended up having to do was slowing down the footage a lot in DaVinci Resolve, which then kind of diminished the breathing animation that I had worked so hard to get into hit film. So in the future, if I'm gonna be filming on an iPad or basically anything without image stabilization, use a tripod. All in all, CamTrack AR was a lot of fun to use. Filming on an iPad was definitely an experience and HitFilm, HitFilm has potential. I think I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into that. Also Blender, I wanna learn Blender. In the meantime, if you just watched this entire video and had no idea what I was talking about at all, that means you haven't seen Dark Corners yet. So what are you even doing here? It's linked right there, go watch it now. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.